Hey guys, what's going on? Jeb here, and in today's video, Vanek and SolidX to offer Bitcoin ETF to institutions via SEC exemption. Guys, Vanek and SolidX have been trying to offer a Bitcoin ETF for like two years and the SEC keeps shooting it down. But as soon as Thursday of this week, they may actually be offering a Bitcoin ETF to institutions such as hedge funds and banks because of a loophole in the SEC's guidelines. We're going to talk about this a little bit later. This is actually a pretty big deal. Before we get to that though, guys, we have to do some technical analysis on Bitcoin because what in the world is going on here, guys? Bitcoin is breaking ridiculously bullish and I would say it has a whole lot to do with our bullish cross down here on the daily MACD chart. Guys, we live streamed during the cross last night because I knew it was going to be a major event and it turns out we were right. Bitcoin is having a major, major rally that may bring Bitcoin into a new state of rally that could push us up to $20,000 before the end of the year. So we'll be discussing that later on as well. I also want to touch on Bitcoin's market dominance because right now Bitcoin's total share of the cryptocurrency market, its market dominance, is now at the highest it's been since 2017. As we can see here on Bitcoin's market dominance, we have continued to push higher and higher and higher and I want to discuss what that means for Bitcoin and the cryptocurrency markets. And finally, to wrap the video up, I'm going to briefly talk about this article right here on Cointelegraph. This is an amazing article for technical analysis that I encourage all of you to watch, and we'll be covering this later on in the video. Guys, I think we got a great video lined up for you today. If you enjoyed today's video, definitely consider smashing that like button. It helps out the channel when you do that. And also, if you're new here, hit that subscribe button for daily cryptocurrency technical analysis and daily cryptocurrency news updates. So guys, without much further ado, let's go ahead and dive right on into it. If you watched yesterday's video, you will know it was recorded right about here. And in that video, Bitcoin had just started breaking out and we were calling for a big bullish breakout of Bitcoin for a couple reasons. One of them being that Bitcoin had just broken this uptrend of resistance in this bear flag right here, which is something that doesn't normally happen, but when it does, it's normally quite bullish. Furthermore, guys, I saw that a Bitcoin MACD cross was going to be happening last night at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time or midnight UTC, and that's exactly what we saw happen. In fact, I live streamed during that time to capture that, and immediately after we saw this MACD cross, Bitcoin rallied about 1%. Now, the majority of what happened last night wouldn't come until several hours later, but I have a feeling that a lot of this bull bullishness that we've seen over the last 48 hours has to do with this bullish MACD cross. And the reason I say that, guys, is because as I mentioned in yesterday's video, and as I'm going to mention in this video again, because it is important, every time Bitcoin has a bullish MACD cross on the daily chart, there is a rally. It's just about every single time. Now, sometimes you'll see a little bit of a fake out like we saw back over here, but Bitcoin was trading sideways. That doesn't even really count. We saw a bullish cross, and a little while later, we saw a rally. Guys, we saw a rally here, here. You can go back on the history of Bitcoin so far, and you're going to find that when Bitcoin has a bullish cross on the daily chart, it's normal a rally. And it's not only that that we were using to predict a new Bitcoin rally, it was also the fact that Heiken Ashi had just turned green. And by the way, this new Heiken Ashi candlestick that we have right here looks amazing, guys. This is a big, tall, green Heiken Ashi candlestick with a long upper wick, no bottom wick. That is very, very strong and indicative of several more days of rally. Normally, when you see a candlestick like that form, as we last saw over here, there's normally going to be a big rally. Now, I want to point out that Heiken Ashi, even though it is used to smooth out the chart and get rid of false signals, there are sometimes false signals as we can see in here. But guess what didn't happen when Bitcoin had this false signal right here, guys? We did not have a cross on the MACD. Guys, when Bitcoin goes bullish and turns green on the Heiken Ashi, if it doesn't have a MACD cross, it probably doesn't mean anything. But when you see Heiken Ashi turn green and you see MACD turn bullish at the same time, that is almost always an indicator of a new uptrend, which will probably last between 7 and 21 days on the daily chart. So guys, I'm feeling very bullish on Bitcoin right now. Funnily enough, Bitcoin was actually very overextended on the RSI last night, as you can see. But guys, one thing that's really interesting here is that Bitcoin rallied quite a lot and set this bull flag in motion. We talked about this bull flag in yesterday's live stream and I had a feeling it would push us up to around $11,000. You can go and watch that live stream. The price target I had was between 10, 8, and 11 and it looks like we've gone up to about 11.75 right now. But the interesting thing here is that Bitcoin was massively overbought on the hourly and the four hourly RSI, but Bitcoin still broke bullish. Guys, when Bitcoin does something that you don't expect it to, that's normally a point in favor of whoever's controlling the market. So let me give a tangible example for that because that could be a little hard to understand. When Bitcoin has its RSI up here in overbought territory, and that's indicating that the bears should take control and that we should Bart Simpson down here, but instead Bitcoin doesn't do that and it has a major bullish breakout and breaks another 3 or 4% to the upside, then that is a major sign of bullish strength. When you're already bullish, when you're already overbought, and then you break bullish again, that's a big sign of bullish strength. And by the way, guys, on the hourly chart, we are seeing a bullish cross on the MACD down here again as well. So that's good news for the rest of today. Now, even though that Bitcoin is looking very bullish, I do 
do want to make one thing very clear, and that is that Bitcoin has run quite substantially over the last 24 hours. As we can see in the last exactly 24 hours, if we use bottom of green to top of green, we can see that Bitcoin has run 8.5% in a day. That is a little overextended. I mean, we've seen Bitcoin run much farther than that in 24 hours, but that is definitely warranting of some consolidation or maybe a small pullback. So while I'm very bullish on Bitcoin for today, we might see a little bit of consolidation. We may see Bitcoin do something like this, where we go up to this downtrend of resistance. And if you're not familiar with that one, I'll show you. We may see Bitcoin rally up to our downtrend of resistance right here and then reject and consolidate for a little while. But for right now, guys, Bitcoin is looking very bullish and especially considering that daily chart MACD cross and the fact that Heiken Ashi has turned very green, I fully expect that Bitcoin is going to test this downtrend of resistance and we're probably going to break it. I have a feeling we're going to break within the next four days. That's my call right now. I think we're going to break it. If we come up here and reject, reject off of it, then it's possible we move all the way back down here. But this is going to be an important decision point. So keep in mind that a major decision point and also a major trading opportunity is coming up in the next couple of days. If Bitcoin comes up to this downtrend of resistance and starts testing it, you guys better believe that I am going to be longing this with a lot of leverage like right here above this Bitcoin breaks through it. Very tight stop loss to protect myself because if Bitcoin breaks this, there's going to be a lot of exuberance in the market. But guys, the fact that there's so much exuberance in the market, I think is why we've already seen Bitcoin do this rally and why I think it's going to continue. So let's move on to some news that kind of explains that phenomenon. The first one here is that Bitcoin's total share of market capitalization is now at all time high since March of 2017, guys. If we look at percentage of total market dominance charts here on CoinMarketCap, we can see that Bitcoin is sitting at 70.1% market dominance, up from where it was of around 36% in April of 2018. Just a little over a year ago, Bitcoin had half of the market dominance that it does now. And that's a really interesting trend, and I think it highlights some very important things about the cryptocurrency markets. Guys, in general, all of these altcoins, they just don't mean anything. I mean, a lot of these altcoins, especially outside of the top like 15 or 20, most of these altcoins down here, they may have a use case, but in general, they're absolute trash. I'm not calling anyone out, but the vast majority of these altcoins are garbage. And the ones that aren't garbage, guys, and the ones that do have a use case and are being implemented, they're still like in early alpha. All of cryptocurrency is still in early alpha. It's still very, very early on in its development. Bitcoin is no different, but the difference between Bitcoin and all of these altcoins is twofold. One, Bitcoin is the top dog and it was first. So it is obviously going to be the currency that is most used. Whenever I accept payments in cryptocurrency for CT2A, by the way, every single payment that has ever been sent to me for the Cryptocurrency Technical Analysis Academy, every last one of them has been sent in Bitcoin. There have probably been 30 payments and not one of them has been sent in an altcoin. That's because people prefer transacting in Bitcoin because people prefer holding Bitcoin. It's the biggest cryptocurrency. But the second reason why it's taking up all this market dominance, in my opinion, and why it has such a gigantic market capitalization, literally 10 times higher than the second Ethereum, is because of its use use case, guys. Not only have all of these other altcoins not really reached their maturation yet, most of them aren't being used for what they were designed to be used for yet. Even Ethereum and XRP and Litecoin, I mean, they're getting some moderate usage, but we're seeing people do real estate deals for $20 million and transacting in Bitcoin. Bitcoin has some real fundamental volume under it. I read an article on the channel like eight months ago about someone spending, I don't know how many tens of millions of dollars on an art piece. Maybe it was several million dollars. I think I, I want to say it was between like five and $15 million on an art piece. They transacted in Bitcoin. Maybe was real estate. They transacted in Bitcoin. Boom. Transactions complete in 60 minutes. $5 transaction fee when instead if they had gone through the banks, they would have had to pay 1% of that fee because it was international. Bitcoin is starting to mature. Bitcoin is leaving alpha and Bitcoin is entering beta, which is why I'm so happy about it and why I think it's gathering so much market dominance. When some of these altcoins start to implement their real world solutions and they start to really scale, like get really big, then I think they're going to do a lot better. And I'm not saying that all altcoins are not doing what they're meant to do yet. I'm just saying that a lot of them aren't quite there yet. So that's my opinion on that. That's why I think this is happening. And it is very important because I don't think that the altcoins are going to have a major run for a little while. I think Bitcoin's going to remain top dog probably through the end of this year as we continue to see bullish news stories like this one and bullish news stories like Bax coming online. So speaking of bullish news stories like this one, let's go ahead and dive on into this. Vanek and Solidex to offer Bitcoin ETF to institutions via SEC exemption. I'll be right back. My dog is barking. Okay, I'm back and I have dog. Let's continue. Van Eck and Solidex to offer Bitcoin ETF to institutions via SEC exemption. I can say that fast. Guys, this is a big news story. And the reason that it's a big news story is because these guys have been trying to get a Bitcoin ETF on our shelves for a long time, well over a year and a half. I've been covering the Van Eck Solidex Bitcoin ETF pretty much for the entire time that we've been covering news on this channel, which is a long time. And now they've actually found a little bit of a loophole so that they can offer a Bitcoin ETF to hedge funds and banks. So let's go ahead and read this. According to a report by the Wall Street Journal on 
Tuesday, Vanek Securities and SolidX Management, which have previously had a decision on their proposed Bitcoin ETF postponed by the SEC like 20 times, are taking an unusual route to bypass the regulatory hurdles. They will use an SEC exemption that will allow shares in their Vanek SolidX Bitcoin Trust to be offered to institutions such as hedge funds and banks, but not retail investors. That's the key word right here. Only to hedge funds and banks. Maybe later they'd be able to get accredited investors without an SEC exemption. I'm not quite sure. But for right now, they're only offering it to hedge funds and banks. The shares are reportedly planned to be sold from Thursday under the SEC's Rule 144A, which allows privately placed securities to be traded among qualified institutional buyers with shorter holding periods and without the requirements to register at the SEC. So essentially, they're offering a Bitcoin ETF light version to hedge funds and banks so that we can at least get something on the board. And I think this is a very big development and one that probably is not going to get as much press as it deserves. The reason I think this is so important, guys, is because baby steps are key, guys. Baby steps are key. The SEC doesn't seem like it ever wants to accept a Bitcoin ETF, at least not in the near future. But if they see that a Bitcoin ETF is going over just fine with hedge funds and banks, maybe the SEC and the people on the board like Hester Pierce would be a little bit more inclined, a little bit, uh, they'd have a little bit more evidence for their position that a Bitcoin ETF is not in fact going to destroy the economy, that a Bitcoin ETF in fact could be a good thing for the economy, and that the SEC is not going to get egg on their face if they approve one. And also guys, another reason why this is a big deal is not only because it's setting precedent that Bitcoin ETFs are okay, and that they are in fact something the SEC should approve, it's also getting big institutions like hedge funds and banks into the space because I know a lot of these banks and hedge funds they want to invest in Bitcoin. I mean, look at what we did this. Look at what we did today, guys. This was an eight and a half percent move. You don't get that in stock markets. You just don't. Not unless you're trading penny stocks, and these institutions are typically not very interested in those. So this could be a channel for millions and hundreds of millions and billions of dollars to flow into the cryptocurrency space as these hedge funds and banks start to invest and buy into this Bitcoin ETF. It's just an idea, but it's something that could very easily bolster Bitcoin in a big way. Like I said, not only is it a, a win for legal precedence that may help the SEC actually approve an ETF in the future, it's also another gateway for more institutions to start buying Bitcoin and to start investing in the space. And guys, don't forget that we also have backed launching, hopefully on the 23rd. That's another big deal. Guys, I think Bitcoin right now is positioned for a major rally coming into the end of this year. Not only with this new Bitcoin ETF, not only with back, but with all the good news happening in the space, pretty much every single day, there's some kind of small bullish news story. But when you have one of those every single day, that, that fuels the fire. It stokes the flames of Bitcoin and allows it to continue higher because people feel when they open Cointelegraph or they open Coindesk or, or whatever news site they look at, and every single day they're seeing an adoption story or a bullish development on regulation or some country uh, making cryptocurrency tax-free. When they see that, they feel good about the market. And this is another example of that. I'm feeling very bullish on Bitcoin, and I think we've got a long way to go for the rest of this year. One last thing I want to touch on is this article. And as you guys can see, this is a very long article, so I'm not going to go through the entire thing, but I do encourage you to do so on your own. I will link this in the description down below. And if I don't, simply go on Cointelegraph. It's one of the hottest stories over here right now. It's from a few days ago. You will be able to find it. There's a few very interesting things in here. Not only is the crypto fear and greed index at record lows and has been for a little while, now it's starting to recover a little bit. And that was a very bullish sign for Bitcoin, which I think kind of predicted this move that we've had over the last couple of days. This also talks about uh, the Bollinger Bands being tightening, which is something I've talked about on the channel as well. And it also, interestingly enough, talks about the golden ratio multiple multiplier down here by a fellow named Philip Swift. If you don't know who Philip Swift is and you don't know what the golden ratio multiplier is, go check him out on Twitter. This guy's a freaking genius and this thing is amazing. I'm probably going to do a dedicated video on this relatively soon, so watch out for that on the channel. But the one thing I did actually want to talk about in this because I can't get to all of it is this. Indicators converging on the back launch day. Take a quick glance at Bitcoin's daily chart, four hourly chart, and one hour chart and one will see a process of bull pennant, symmetrical triangle patterns, and ascending wedges in all variety of sizes. This is before a bearish breakout, but a lot of this is still very relevant. Interesting Interestingly, following the triangle arms to their convergence brings one to September 23rd, the same day Backed officially launches. Guys, not only is Backed launching a very bullish event, it's also fact that there's a lot of bullishness happening in the market right now, and it's all happening kind of right before Backed launches right over here on the 23rd. So what I have a feeling is going to happen here is that Bitcoin's going to be rallying, comes into Backed's launch, and we're going to see what happens here. This might drive Bitcoin higher or lower. We will see if it's a buy the rumor, sell the news kind of event, or if this is just an afterburner on Bitcoin that's going to push it higher. We shall most certainly see. But guys, I am very very much looking forward to back. I'm looking forward to the rest of this year, and I'm looking forward to seeing if Bitcoin will break our red downtrend of resistance here in the next 72 hours. I think there's a good chance that it will. But anyway, guys, that is pretty much going to do it for today's video. I really do want to thank each and every single last one of you for watching as always, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.